On ABC's Bewitched, veteran actress Marion Lorne played Samantha's favorite aunt Clara. She also had the distinction of being one of the few relatives of Samantha that her husband Darren actually got along with. Aunt Clara was a gloriously hapless character who was elderly, bumbling, and absent-minded, while simultaneously being quite lovable. While she always meant well, her spells typically would backfire in comedic fashion. Fans of the series might recall Aunt Clara suddenly vanished at the end of the fourth season. She was later replaced in season six by Sam's new bungling housekeeper Esmeralda. While Aunt Clara's departure was never really explained, the real reason why Marion Lauren was no longer in the show is actually quite heartbreaking. Join Facts First as we get to the bottom of why Aunt Clara from Bewitched was never seen again. Marion Lauren got her start in theater. Born Marion Lauren McDougall on August 12, 1883, this Pennsylvania native hailed from Scottish and English immigrants. She grew up in a small mining town called West Pittston, which can be found halfway between Scranton and Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. Marion's mother was a homemaker named Jenny Louise, and her father was a doctor named William. As far as birth year, records indicate she was born in 1883, but it appears that by the 1920s, she lied about her age to make herself appear younger. Back then, record keeping wasn't like how it is today. You could simply jot down another name or date on an official document, and there wasn't really an easy way to verify whether or not it was accurate without jumping through a bunch of hoops. Marion kept up the ruse that she was younger than she really was until her death, because even her urn lists her birth year as 1885. But we do know that she enrolled at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City shortly after high school. She made her debut on Broadway in 1905 at age 22. She also enjoyed a flourishing stage career across the pond in London, where she had her own theater called the White Hall. There, she enjoyed top billing, appearing in plays written by her husband, Walter C. Hackett, whom she married in 1911. Lauren and Hackett remained happily married until his death in 1944. They never had any kids, but by all accounts, they seemed content with their lives. Lauren and Hackett's plays at the White Hall were all very popular and well-received by critics. None of their stage productions ran shorter than 125 nights. After appearing in several Vitaphone shorts with Warner Brothers, including 1931's Success, in which she co-starred with Jack Haley, Lauren made her feature-length film debut in her late 60s. That was in Hitchcock's psychological thriller noir classic Strangers on a Train. Despite making a definitive impression in that film, Hollywood only continued to use her a couple more times in movies. Before we tell you more about Mary and Lauren's acting career, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. She successfully made the leap to television. In the infancy of television, Lauren was a series regular on the ABC sitcom Mr. Peepers, playing the perpetually perplexed junior high English teacher Mrs. Gurney. From 1957 to 58, she appeared alongside Joan Caulfield in the short-lived yet much applauded NBC sitcom Sally. She played a wealthy and scatterbrained elderly widow who was co-owner of a department store. And while she was often cast in the roles of befuddled, butterfingered women, in truth she had a great deal of range in her performances. She was a gifted actress, but she once admitted she was, quote, a coward when it came to live television. That being said, she was persuaded on more than one occasion to appear on live TV with Rosalind Russell to promote the film The Girl Rush in the mid-50s. After Sally was canceled after a season, Lauren made regular appearances on the CBS variety series The Gary Moore Show. While she devoted practically her entire life to acting and accomplished much both on the stage and screen, Marion found the most widespread fame after she was cast on Bewitched in 1964. That also proved to be her final role. She will always be remembered as Aunt Clara. Like Samantha, Aunt Clara was a lovable witch, but with her advancing age, she found she was beginning to lose her powers. Lauren delivered an incredible performance in that series and would likely have continued to shine on the small screen if her health had permitted her to do so. Lauren was nominated for an Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actress, but sadly just 10 days before the awards ceremony, she succumbed to a heart attack in her Manhattan apartment on May 9, 1966. She won that Emmy posthumously, and Elizabeth Montgomery gave a heartfelt and touching acceptance speech on her behalf. Lauren was 84 when she died. At the time of her passing, Bewitched had just finished up production on its fourth season and was gearing up for season five. 
Lauren wasn't the only Bewitched cast member to die during production. Alice Pierce played Samantha and Darren's nosy next-door neighbor Gladys Kravitz. She was diagnosed with terminal cancer shortly before production on the series started in 1964. However, she hid this fact from the show's producers, knowing if she revealed her diagnosis, she wouldn't get the role. Despite keeping her health issues secret, throughout her time on the series, her rapid weight loss was quite apparent. Nearing the end of the show's second season, Pierce sadly passed away from ovarian cancer at age 48. Like Mary and Lauren, she posthumously won a Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Following her death, the role of Gladys was recast with Sandra Gould taking Pierce's place. Rumors persisted of a Bewitched cast curse. While Bewitched is remembered as being a light-hearted comedy with an overall uplifting message, pretty much everyone who appeared in it either suffered a great deal of turmoil because of it or ended up meeting tragic ends. This naturally led the more tinfoil hat-inclined crowd to arrive at the conclusion that the show was cursed. After Bewitched went off the air in 1972, Elizabeth Montgomery found herself typecast as everyone's favorite suburban housewife witch. She couldn't seem to escape the role. For the remainder of her career, she refused to do roles that remotely resembled Samantha's zany personality. By the time of her death from cancer in 1995, she didn't want anything to do with the show at all. Dick York became one of America's most beloved actors during his time on Bewitched, but his personal life was riddled with tragedy and illness. He got his start as a child actor in the 40s and landed his breakthrough role in 1960's Inherit the Wind. After being cast as Darren, he was forced to leave the show in 1969 after suffering a devastating back injury and subsequently getting hooked on pain meds. Unable to keep acting in the mid-1970s, he lost his life savings in a failed business venture. With no other options to fall back on, he was forced to go back on welfare. Broke and destitute, York died of emphysema in 1992. After leaving Bewitched, Dick York was replaced by Dick Sargent. He had originally been offered the role of Darren in 1964, but turned it down. Sargent stuck around for three seasons, but probably wouldn't have been given the role if the producers discovered he was gay. Dick came out in 1991 and became a gay role model of sorts. He knew he was risking his career by coming out of the closet, but being true to himself was more important than fame and fortune. Sadly, just three years later, he died of prostate cancer. Actress Agnes Moorhead, who played Endora, was in the cast of the 1956 film The Conqueror. The movie was actually filmed near a nuclear test site and was highly radiated, although nobody realized that at the time of filming. Dozens of cast and crew members ended up dying of cancer, including the film's director, Dick Powell, Susan Hayward, John Wayne, and ultimately Moorhead as well. She succumbed to the disease in 1974. The last Bewitched star to meet a tragic end was David White, who played Darren's boss, Larry Tate. White later became a regular on shows like The Rockford Files and Columbo. But after his son Jonathan was killed in the horrific 1988 Lockerbie bombing, White became a recluse. Tragically, his wife, Mary Welch, passed away when giving birth to Jonathan in 1958. A little more than a year after dropping out of the spotlight, White died of a heart attack in 1990. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Mary and Lorne? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.